So I was told that the last time we had the Sheikh, uh, we, we were doing the American Sephardi Music Festival, and we had a Turkish Jewish pianist and her Turkish Muslim musicians here, and they performed that song for the Sheikh, just they were rehearsing, and they just decided to perform that song. And that everywhere the Sheikh has gone since then, he said, how wonderful that my Jewish brothers performed this song when I came to their center. So we wanted, and it wasn't easy now because many in the Jewish community, we don't listen to musical instruments during this time. It's a time of mourning between Passover and Shavuot, between the two festival holidays. So we couldn't arrange for the, for the musicians, but we wanted to honor you again with this song. And this song also has other significance. Uh, as, as the Sheikh spoke when he was here for his first visit, Medina, the tradition is, was founded by Jewish refugees. It's the city of Yatrib. And the Prophet Muhammad, when he was rejected initially from Mecca, he came to Medina and rolled up his sleeves as a, as a social entrepreneur and made, started to fix the problems of Medina, which had many contentious tribes and disagreements. And the Prophet created what's called the Constitution of Medina, which recognized all people, Jews, Muslims, Christians, as members of the Ummah, of the community. Different responsibilities, but everyone was equal. And for this, the Prophet Muhammad, as a lawgiver, is recognized at the US Supreme Court. Yesterday, we were with the Sheikh at his summit at the UN on responsible leadership. And this morning, we, ho we had the honor of hosting the Sheikh at the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue, which is the oldest Jewish congregation in North America. The Sheikh is very interested in Jewish religious practice, and so we were looking at the Torah scrolls and looking at the Ten Commandments. When we were in the small synagogue, he made sure his photographer zoomed in on the Ten Commandments. But I want to say a, a word or two about the historical significance of that synagogue. This also was a, a congregation, the Jews in America, the community, arose from refugees, refugees from Ristefe in Brazil, who were afraid of the Inquisition finding them in their new home, in the new world. They ended up in New York. They founded the synagogue in 1654 and then grew and grew and grew. And from that congregation was Gershom Satius, arose Gershom Satius, the patriot rabbi of the, of the American Revolution, one of the clergy at George Washington's inaugural. In keeping with the spirit of Jewish immigration and, and civic leadership, Emma Lazarus was also a member of that congregation. And her immortal words from the poem, The New Colossus, are emblazoned on the Statue of Liberty, welcoming immigrants to this country. Justice Cardozo of the US Supreme Court, one of the first Jewish Supreme Court justices after Brandeis, also a member of that congregation. And his collection of books and documents is part of the American Sephardi Federation. So we want to recapture this spirit of Medina. And we've been talking with the Sheikh about a number of ways to work together, uh, to enhance research, to enhance education, to enhance cultural understanding between, as, as Richard Sassoon put it, the next generation of Sephardic leadership who share culture, share history, share language, and the Muslim world. And we've arrayed here today some photographs of the Jews of Yemen and some artifacts in back as well, which we'll, which we'll go through. Um, if I asked you who's Jewish in these pictures, who's Muslim in these pictures, I don't think many people could tell. This picture right here is of a Muslim man in Morocco who's the caretaker of a Jewish shrine. 
The picture next to him is all of Yemenite Jews. In our collection, uh, arrayed on the table in back, are photographs of the Jews of Egypt. And amongst the collection are also photographs of mosques. We gather today on Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust Remembrance, and during the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Week. And the, a mission of the Sheikh is to use the Holocaust as a way to understand the present as well, and to conf use examples of historical hatred to confront contemporary extremism. So also in the collection of the American Sephardi Federation are documents, mostly in Arabic, written by Jewish merchants from Timbuktu. Intermixed in the writing are some Hebrew words. Some of it is in Judeo-Arabic, written in Arabic characters. And these documents were saved by an American diplomat from extremists who otherwise would have destroyed all the history. In saying that we want to look at the past and in talk, getting to the agreement that will be signed today between the Muslim World League and the Conference of Presidents and the American Sephardi Federation, I have to say we're not talking about a mythicized past. We're not talking about a past that is either idealized or demonized. At the American Sephardi Federation, we don't deal in narratives, we deal in truth, we deal in history. There are examples that are conducive to coexistence from our past, and there are conflicts and there are disagreements that also need to be discussed. The important lesson in getting back to Medina is that we recapture the spirit of understanding and look to highlight and emphasize and make accessible the documents, the books, the artifacts that attest to our shared past and hopefully a better future. At the center, in Ju last June, we organized a conference on the Jews and Muslims of Yemen and had scholars, Muslim scholars, Jewish scholars, and scholars of all backgrounds who came to discuss these issues. And this June, we we're planning a conference, uh, Uncommon Commonalities, Shared Values, Cultural Values of Jews and Muslims in Morocco. And next week, we will host the second iftar in the history of the Center for Jewish History, along with our friends who are here from the Muslim American Leadership Alliance, and Mike from the, and Simo, and Irina, and others from the Moroccan Americans in New York. And so I think it's very appropriate that in this place of history, we are coming together today in recognition of these dates to sign this important agreement to attest that it stops now, the hatred, the fanaticism, and the bigotry. Thank you.